Madam Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present SFU President Emeritus Michael Stevenson. During his two terms as president from 2000 to 2010, Dr. Stevenson boldly steered SFU through a decade of fiscal restraint, political tensions, and external pressures to emerge not only unscathed, but also transformed into Canada's top comprehensive university. This is testament to his tenacity, his courage to explore and take risks, his quick wit, and his powers of persuasion as a silver-tongued orator. <laughs> With 500 million in capital funding, Dr. Stevenson led an unprecedented period of growth at SFU. Under his tenure, SFU opened a new Surrey campus, increasing post-secondary access in the South Fraser, expanded the Vancouver campus with the Siegel Graduate School of Business and the Goldcorp Center for the Arts, built a sustainable residential community atop Burnaby Mountain, and partnered in the new Great Northern Way campus. In 2009, SFU was awarded a gold medal for public sector leadership in coming down from the mountain, stimulating urban renewal as the intellectual heart of its communities. A tireless advocate for principles of inclusion and access, Dr. Stevenson managed a large growth in student enrollment, led several initiatives in curriculum innovation and international education, and created three new faculties. SFU's research enterprise expanded significantly during his presidency, achieving the fastest rate of growth in research funding and a leading position in research impact among Canadian comprehensive universities. Dr. Stevenson's contributions to higher education and civic engagement have been recognized with the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Medal and an honorary degree from York University. Dr. Stevenson is a renowned political scientist with interests in social policy, international development, and immigration. He has held academic appointments in Canada, the United States, and Africa, and has published extensively on African post-independence politics, Canadian political culture, and public policy. He's co-authored Ideology and Politics in Canada, won the 2000 Harold Innes Prize for the best Canadian book in the social sciences. He has contributed to public policy research on subjects ranging from Crown Corporation governance to national health policy. Upon his retirement from SFU, Dr. Stephen said, said he was looking forward to the calmer waters and quieter harbors of his troisième A former Shakespearean actor with a lifelong passion for the arts, he currently serves on the boards of the Vancouver Opera, the BC Achievement Foundation, Push International Festival for the Performing Arts, and the Advisory Council of the Vancouver Indian Summer Festival. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa on Michael Stevenson. Michael Stevenson, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. Stevenson will be hooded by Dr. John Driver, Vice President of Academic, and Dr. Kate Ross, Registrar.
It is with great pleasure that I now call on Dr. Michael Stevenson for his convocation address. Dr. Stevenson. Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, colleagues and friends, fellow graduates, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly grateful for the honor given me this afternoon and for the very warm welcome back to this campus. And I'm asked at this moment to say a few words to the graduating class. Unfortunately, my colleagues will tell you that I find a few words difficult. I'm also not a, a billionaire university dropout, so I'm unlikely to resort to an inspirational call to follow your passion or other such appeals that you can find on the most popular websites or YouTube convocation speeches. My degree today comes, unlike yours, without examination, in a field I know nothing about, one the university doesn't even offer. And that, of course, undercuts my ability to talk about lofty subjects like uh, professional ethics and integrity, so popular on occasions like this. But let me say a few words about the importance of your university education to your future careers based on my personal experience as a fellow arts and social sciences student. This is a joyous occasion in which you are justifiably proud, as I am, of your SFU degree. But I suspect that most of you will be somewhat apprehensive about leaving the university for the complicated and troubled world outside, because it is a complicated and troubled world. People outside academia like to refer to the real world as distinguished from the art artificial privilege and hopeless idealism they describe, they ascribe to the academy. But ignorance of universities aside, the real world is no longer the world they celebrate. The supremacy of North American military and economic power cannot now be taken for granted. Our democratic life is compromised by forces which produce dramatically declining rates of political participation, ideologically rigid division, and the subordination of civil liberties to the so-called wars on crime and terror. And most obviously, the dominant consensus about the virtues of free market capitalism has been undermined by serious recession and an uncertain economy in which the new normal is very slow growth with massive levels of unemployment. In a curious version of blaming the victim, self-styled job producers who champion the real world in which they are advantaged by much reduced taxation and massively disproportionate shares of national income blame unfunded universities or underfunded universities and overly indebted students for being poorly prepared for innovation and employment. Especially condemned are students like you and me in the liberal arts and social sciences. Do not believe it. The linkages between higher education and economic success are, of course, complicated. But the argument of real-world elites that higher education must be tailored to job markets is largely nonsense. The changes and volatility in those markets means an inevitable problem of predicting labor demand, and changes in the knowledge base of economic activity mean that most curriculum content has built-in obsolescence. More than that, most successful careers are built around mobility rather than specialization, and there are no specific qualifications for most leadership positions. My own experience is typical. I did not train to be a university president because there is no such educational program. I was fortunate even to start an academic career because I spent my early undergraduate years paying minimal attention to academic work. As an undergraduate, I devoted myself rather, as many of you I hope have done, to love affairs, to theater, and to student politics. And as it turned out, this was not entirely a bad, a bad thing. Being lucky in love, 
buoyed my enthusiasm for life and buttressed my self-confidence. Although only in mid-career was I able properly to distinguish love from narcissism or lust and to enter into a loving relationship with Jan, which has been the cornerstone of my success and happiness. My experience in the theater made me interested in characters and motivation quite different from my own, and it trained me for public speaking and coping with stage fright in many different situations. More important, that extracurricular experience cemented a lifelong interest in the fine and performing arts, which have been a constant source of stimulation, emotional engagement, and sheer delight. And my involvement in student politics was an education in political organization, communications and public relations, in the demands of leadership, and the need for courage under fire. My undergraduate preoccupations with love, theater, and politics also fueled a wide-ranging intellectual curiosity that could best be satisfied by the options available to arts and social science students like you. I majored in political science, which involves little real politics and absolutely no science, but it encourages wide reading in history, literature, philosophy, psychology, economics, and sociology, as well as a working competence in foreign languages and statistics. My ability as an arts and social science student to read and think broadly was, I think, my most important qualification for leadership and success, and it will be yours. It is the basis for what the business rhetoric on leadership mystifies as vision, that is a clarity about objectives that are bold but not fanciful because they reflect a real mapping of the world in which you have to act, a critical sense of the problems, challenges, and opportunities you confront, an empathetic sense of who will join and follow you in those directions and who will resist, and an ability to communicate effectively, perhaps even inspirationally, so as to forge winning coalitions in support of the changes you want to lead. Breadth of vision does not come from an all-consuming specialization, but from broad-ranging curiosity, inquiry, and investigation. The future belongs to the curious, to quote a professor's advice from Truffaut's great film, Jules et Jim. And your curiosity will lead you in paths you cannot now imagine, but paths that I know will be exciting and rewarding. So as you now graduate from this university, be confident in your own natural abilities, which are amply demonstrated by your success here. Be ambitious and passionate about the things you want to change in your community and society, because without your ambition and passion, no positive change will occur in the trouble and uncertain world you inherit. Learn quickly to bypass self-absorption and the obsession to control others so that you enjoy the rewards of loving partnership, deep friendship, and productive collaboration. But above all, stay curious, knowing that change is constant. The natural world is infinitely intriguing but gravely threatened by human exploitation and indifference. Human affairs are always contradictory and history unpredictable. The variety of human experience and culture is endless, as is the capacity of the human imagination. And only the curious respond successfully to the problems, crises, and opportunities that occur as the universe unfolds. So congratulations to all of you my very best wishes for your future success and happiness. Thank you.